order to provide security to the region. Ito ang, uh, I'll show you a video of what the Tongpeng can do in terms of offensive capability. But then the Americans are saying, we can also counter that, don't worry about it. So the Chinese are saying, we can attack a moving aircraft carrier, but the Americans are saying, we can defend against this Dongpeng 21D missile. Kasi hindi pa tested ito, so nobody knows what will be the outcome in an actual shooting situation. And this is a video. <coughs> The U.S. Navy believes China's Dong Feng 21D carrier killer missile has reached initial operating capability. According to state run media, China would attack an American carrier with three salvos of the missile. The first would pierce the hull, start fires, and shut down the flight deck. The second would knock out the engines and be accompanied by air attacks. The third would sink the carrier. The Navy would seek to disable the 21 d during all phases of its trajectory. <coughs> missile defense cruisers could shoot it down. Electronic warfare aircraft could jam it. The missile could also be tricked into thinking the carrier is somewhere to stop. So, you have an offense, no? The Chinese are saying it can target, because of their terminal guidance, a moving aircraft carrier moving at 35 knots. But the, the, uh, the Americans say we can counter that without electronic countermeasures, without anti-missile system, anti-missile missile system, and of course uh, by, uh, by presenting a, a fake uh, situation. Lately, we nakita din na survey ship in the vicinity of Wreck to Bank. Ito yung uh, Reed Bank, no? This is a big body of water, very close to Palawan, very close to Malampaya. And again, I said that uh, the reason why they are uh, stalking us in Ayungi Shoal is because they are also targeting uh, Recto Bank, which is about 8,000 square kilometers, malaking uh, uh, area ito, and uh, reportedly uh, very rich in natural gas and uh, oil, and of course, uh, fishery resources. So, isa dito sa mga target nila. Ito, ito yung Recto Bank. Now, the other thing that we must look at is the first island chain and the second island chain. The first island chain is the defense line of China to prevent hostile forces from going inside the South China Sea. It is also the take off point to expand <coughs> their coverage. The first island chain stretches from the Malaysia area all the way to uh, the uh, Aleutians area and the first island chain. But what they want is to also expand and go forward into the second island chain, papunta sa Guam na yan. If they succeed in doing that, by expanding their naval capability, then they will have a wider territory of the Western Pacific, and we would fall under their control. Pag nagsaksin sila in expanding and stretching into the second island chain. Kaya ito ginagawa nila, strengthen, and they use it as a take-off point. Dito. Sabi ni President Xi Jinping in his speech uh, during the 70th anniversary of the victory against Japan, sabi niya, China will remain committed to peaceful development. We Chinese love peace. But while he was talking, merong military parade, one of the biggest uh, military parades uh, in modern times, no? And here's President Xi Jinping, and he displayed his weapons there, uh, missiles, uh, uh, tanks, and everything. So sabi ko, how can you reconcile talking of peace and at the same time showing what kind of weapons you have? If I tell you I'm a man of peace, but I'm surrounded by bodyguards bristling with weapons, how can you believe that uh, I'm a man of peace? So, ito yung layer defense strategy nila in China, no? They have several kinds of missiles that would uh, gradually gain control over a wide area of uh, the planet. So, another economic aggression we have to address, yung dumping of cheap, low-quality products. You know, marami na tutuwa, mura yung produkto from China. But remember that a lot of their products are competing with our own made in the Philippines products, particularly garments. They're also killing our own industry. Remember, the una ang lakas ng garments industry natin. But when China came in, ang laki ng damage sa ating garments industry. 
So our response, boycott China products. And uh, our priority is to target garments. Why? Because uh, made in China garments have a lot of substitutes from friendly countries, of course, from the Philippines, from Indonesia, from Sri Lanka, uh, from uh, Vietnam, from uh, India, and from other friendly countries. Every time we buy, remember, every time we buy made in China products, maybe about for every dollar, maybe about 10 cents of that would come back to us in the form of warships, missiles, uh, fighter planes. And ito, boycott, no? At lahat uh, in the U.S., itong uh, U.S. Pinoy's for Good Governance also have their boycott made in China products. Environmental aggression, ito matindi. Destruction of coral reefs, harvesting of pawikans, jugs, giant clams, illegal mining in mga black sand. We're also opposing that. At ito, kanina binanggit ko na, I'll show you what they're doing. Imagine, ito yung, ito yung pirate cross reef before the reclamation. Puto bigyan, coral reef yan, uh, spawning grounds of uh, fishing resources. Ayan na ang uh, fiery cross reef. And according to a marine biologist, no, <laughs> Professor John McManus, what is going on there, that the destruction of the beautiful coral reef atolls in the area, and we have failed miserably, no? ang sabi niya, Quickest rate of permanent loss of coral reef area in the human history. In the human history. That is how, how uh, extensive the coral reef destruction that is going on in the South China Sea. All because of the military objectives of China. Ito ang sinabi niya rito. No? Ito yung mischief reef. Atin ito, nasa loob exclusive economic zone natin. Ayan na, ang mischief reef. Natakpa na itong... Uh, Nagreklamo tayo, remember, nung nabangga ng isang US Navy ship, yung matubataha, just a few meters yung na na-damage doon. Ito, kilometers long ang damage dito. Kilometers long, we're talking of about three kilometers. You see, free. Subirip, ganun din. Subirip, malapit lang sa pag-asa ito. Tingnan nyo, puro tubig ito. Very rich in uh, habitat for uh, fishing resources. Tinakpa na. So, saan mag-iigto? Yung isla mo yun. Ito sa dahil. So, South China Sea accounts for 10% of global fish stocks. 10% of global fish stocks. And it affects about 300 million people in the area. So, ang ginawa natin sa Marcia, we sent a letter to the United Nations, uh, Ban Ki-moon, Secretary General, to complain about uh, the China reclamation and ask them to investigate and take action. At tama, tama there is a Convention on Fishing and Conservation of the Living Resources, and at the same time, just last month only, September 25, 25 in fact, in the presence of world leaders, including President Xi Jinping, the United Nations General Assembly approved a new set of goals Remember the MDGs, uh, Millennium Development Goals. Ngayon meron bago. SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. And one of them is goal number uh, 14. What is uh, goal number uh, 14, uh, seven, uh, 14? To conserve and sustainably use the oceans, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. So we are bringing to their attention, I'm sure they know this already. Eh, kung hindi nila alam ito, natutulog sila doon sa United Nations. And not just, the, not just the United Nations, but also the United Nations uh, UNEP, no, Environment Program, under Executive Director Achim Steiner. Ito dapat area talaga niya ito, environment, protection of the environment. So we have sent them a letter and we hope that they take action on this. Another is social aggression. 90% of illegal drugs come from China. Uh, we are talking of billions and billions of pesos worth of illegal drugs, 90% of them come from China. I remember during my time, even during President Arab's time, President Arab sent a high-level delegation to China to appeal to them to please stop this illegal drugs trade being conducted reportedly by some corrupt generals in the coastal provinces of China but uh, wala nangyari, tuloy pa rin. 
Sunod pa rin ito. Political interference ito, medyo magpantay tayo. Alam niyo kung bakit? China, alam niyo political interference, mamaya babanggitin ko yan. Kasi we are worried because in 1996, they were found to be interfering in the political activities in the United States. Interfering with some political parties, senators, congressmen. If they could do that in a powerful country like the U.S., but more in the Philippines, let's discuss that. Anyway, China is big, but China suffers from a vulnerable geography. Ito malaki in China, pero vulnerable geography, why? Because it is surrounded. They have a short coastline, and they cannot break out from that coastline, unlike in the case of the Philippines. 360 degrees, tagat tayo. Unlike in the case of Japan, 360 degrees. Yung U.S., they have two coasts. But in the case of Indonesia, lalo na, uh, but China is restricted. They can, before they can go out, andyan yung Japan, nakabantay sa kanila. Andyan ang Taiwan, andyan tayo. Andun yung Malacca Strait. They cannot go out of the Indian Ocean without facing the restricted waters of the Malacca Strait. They have a big navy, but their navy cannot really break out. They have to go through what we call the choke points, no? Ang tawag dito, yung uh, sea lines of communication. Restricted, madaling maatake yung sea lines of communication nila during time of peace and also during time of conflict. They can be paralyzed. Uh, ito, ito yung tawag ng strategic choke point. And by position, on these strategic choke points, uh, uh, is uh, uh, concur with the finding of some strategic study groups, like for example, the one in Australia. And they mentioned that, true, China is also facing a lot of uh, restrictions. Yung tiyatag na Malacca dilemma. Their trade can be stopped by uh, blockading them in the Malacca area or with the Indian Navy controlling the Indian Ocean. So this is not just a South China Sea security situation. It is an Indo-Pacific security situation. And we are seeing now a new arms race where the most powerful military powers of the world are converging. China Navy, it's getting big, it's getting bigger. There's an aircraft carrier, mga nuclear submarines, a lot of destroyers, and a lot of modern planes. SU-27, they can build their own, uh, they can manufacture their own uh, fighter planes like the Shenyang J-11 and the Chengdu, uh, Chengdu uh, multi-role fighters. But because of their aggressiveness, China has triggered a coalition against itself. Of course, the leader of the coalition, which is emerging, is uh, the United States. Nagwarni na. You know, a lot of things change very dramatically in May of this year. Because uh, Defense Secretary Carter issued some very strong statements. And they said, we will remain the principal security power in the Asia Pacific area. There should be no mistake, the U.S. will fly, sail, operate wherever international law allows. And they challenged immediately yung uh, reclamation by deploying a P-8 Poseidon maritime surveillance aircraft. By the way, this is not just a surveillance aircraft. It has the power to fight also. It can attack a uh, destroyer from about 200 miles away because they have that uh, capability. And of course, the U.S. Navy with their carrier battle groups, they have a modern warship, $7 billion. Uh, ito yung Zoom one, ready to be deployed anytime now. Very high-tech, the most high-tech uh, ship in the world today. And they're pivot to Asia, and they're pivot in terms of the deployment of several uh, forces all over uh, in South Korea, of course, the rotational agreement with the Philippines, if uh, that will be allowed, uh, that's being reviewed by the Supreme Court. They have uh, forces in Australia, also in uh, Singapore. They have the littoral combat ships there. And they issued a warning that China should tread carefully in the South China Sea. They released their uh, Asia Pacific Maritime Security Strategy addressing the uh, reclamation areas embracing India, also including India, as a net provider of security in the Indian Ocean. And Japan is there. Japan is not 
a small country. It is.